Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to process a photograph of an animal. And in this video, we're going to look at a photo of a giraffe. Before we start with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to be working with. This is the original giraffe image. Now you can see that it hasn't been cropped, but what we're going to do is actually work on the image and create something a little bit more like this from it. Along the way, we're going to see how to add a little bit more detail into the giraffe's eye. And we're also going to say that something very unhappy is going to happen to this image when we go and fix it because these areas, these little sort of hairy areas here on the giraffe are going to end up being fringed with a very ugly blue. So we're going to see how we can work at removing that fringing as well, which is going to be built in by the process of adjusting the rest of the image. And sometimes you'll find that your image will break when you process it, something unexpected will happen and then you'll have to go and fix that up and we'll see that in this particular image. So let's get started. Now I've made a virtual copy of that original image so that we can get to work on it. As we would with most images, we're going to start here in the basic panel because that allows us to make adjustments to the image. You can see that we've got a lot of blue in this image. So when I start to wind up the exposure, we also say that there's a quite a bit of blue throughout this giraffe. There's a sort of blue cast, if you like, to the image. It's also a little bit foggy. There's not a lot of detail, not a lot of contrast through the midtones. So I'm going to select the white balance selector and just select on something on this giraffe which should be sort of white or gray or a sort of black color. So I'm just going to click around and see if I can pick up something that I could white balance to. Now I'm not adverse to adding a little bit of a sort of pinky tone into this giraffe to warm it up, but I think I'm going to settle for that as my balance. We've added a little bit of yellow here and a little bit of magenta. We could even take the yellow up a little bit too. Now if you were capturing this as a DNG or a raw image, you would also be able to select a custom white balance setting. But this is an older JPEG image that I've chosen to work with, so I don't have those options. Let's see what happens when we boost the contrast a little bit because I think we could boost the contrast in this image just to get a little bit more detail here. And of course the other contrast boosting tool is Clarity because Clarity is a mid-tone contrast adjuster and it's going to help bring out some of the detail in this giraffe too. Vibrance is going to help us by adding a little bit of additional color in the undersaturated areas. So I'm looking at some of the areas on the giraffe that could benefit a little bit from vibrance. And now let's go and look at these other settings. And of course it doesn't matter in Lightroom in what order you do things. So you could start with sharpening if you wanted to. It's probably not the best place to start, but it certainly wouldn't be a problem if you did that. So I'm going to drop the highlights down a little bit, try and open up the shadows a bit. And of course, every time I open up the shadows, I flatten the color in the image a little bit. So I want to be careful of that and flattening the sort of tonal range. You may want to work with contrast in a minute because of that. I'm going to bring down the whites a little bit and let's just perhaps open up the blacks a little bit too. Having done that, I might look a little bit more clarity and I'm certainly going to have a look at my tone curve because by default that's just a line which is no curve at all, but I'll probably want medium or strong contrast. There's medium contrast and here's strong contrast. Well, I think medium is enough. I think strong is a little bit probably too much. So having done that, let's address some of the specific problems in this image. And one of them is that the blue sky is a little pale for me. I think that it would probably have been a richer blue. Well, I can come into the color area and grab the blue color and do something with it. 
Now I could choose HSL or I could choose color. When I'm trying to work on a single color like the blue in the sky, I'll usually use the color option because that lets me select blue and then I have the sliders for hue, saturation and luminance just sitting there ready for me. HSL would give me the same results, it's just not quite as easy an option to use. So let's have a look at increasing the saturation in this blue just to try and get a better sky. And I'm a little bit happier with that. And let's maybe crank up the luminance a little bit too. We're just looking for a sweet point here. And here's what I warned you was about to happen was that the hair on the giraffe where it leaks into the sky has gone blue. There's some fringing here. Well, we're going to get rid of the fringing in a minute, so I'm not really concerned about it. Before I leave the blues, though, I'm just going to make sure and see if there is any aqua in the sky. Well, when I boost the saturation to 100, I'm not really seeing a lot of change. So for that, I'm going to assume that the sky is all in the blue channel and not in the aqua channel. So adjusting aqua is not going to have any effect on the sky at all. We may also want to have a look at the brown areas on the giraffe, which are probably going to be in the red area. Well, I can test that by winding the saturation in the red channel all the way up. Well, they're not quite so much in the red area. Maybe they're in the orange. Well, that's where they're sitting. So if we want to boost some of the color in the giraffe, we could increase the saturation in the orange channel here to make the brown areas of the giraffe stand out a little bit more. Thinking that's probably a little bit much, but certainly it could use a boost in the saturation. Now having done that, let's go back to the basic panel and let's see if there are some adjustments we want to do here. For example, we may want to work again with clarity and just see if we want a little bit more or less clarity. We may also want to warm the image up a little bit, taking the temperature up a little bit. But of course, when we do that, we're going to impact the sky, so we probably don't want to do that too much. The next thing I'm going to look at is the giraffe eye because there's a little bit of detail there that if we could grab hold of it, we could make even more compelling. To do this, because I want to isolate this area, I'm going to use the adjustment brush. So I'm going to click on the adjustment brush. I'm going to click to show the selected mask overlay so we can see where we're working. And because I really just want to isolate this eye, I think I'm going to turn auto mask off. It might be a better option for me as I might be able to select this a little bit more easily. I'm using the square bracket keys to adjust the brush. I'm using a 100% flow and a bit of a feather. So let's just click to pin this adjustment brush down and I'm just going to color over the eye area. I'm going to pick up some of these eyelashes, but you know, later on I might decide I don't want those at all, but that doesn't matter because it's easy to get rid of later on. If I go too far, I can go back and select the eraser or just hold the Alt key down because that gives me the eraser and then just paint out the areas I don't want selected. Now let's turn off Show Selected Mask Overlay and let's go to work on the eye. Well, I want to increase the exposure a little bit because I want it to be a little bit lighter. I want it to be contrast here. I want more saturation. I want more clarity. I want all these things in this eye area, but I don't want so much noise. So I might increase the noise reduction a little bit. And again, go back to exposure, increase the exposure a little bit, maybe increase the highlights, maybe get a bit of detail out of the shadows. Well, that's packing a really big punch, that one there. And because it's very blue, I may also go and increase the temperature which is going to warm the image a little bit in this area. Now, it's really, really hard to see this in place when it's this large. So I'm going to zoom out. So I'm going to press the Z key to zoom out. And then I'm going to turn off my pin right now. So I'm not seeing the pin at all. And here I can click to turn the brush adjustment on and off. So that's it off. 
and this is it on. And I think I like the effect that I've created. Now maybe a little bit too much in the eyelashes, but I'm really happy with the rest of it. So let's zoom back in and I'm going to take my eraser brush. I'm going to select the eraser this time. I'm going to increase the feather a fairly small size and I'm going to decrease the flow because I don't want to erase all of this, but I want to erase a little bit of it. I'm just working in this area that is covered with the eyelashes. I can go back to showing my pin and showing my overlay and you can see now that in painting with the eraser we're actually removing some of the effect from the area where I thought I had a little bit too much of an effect. So now I'm going to click done and let's zoom back out again. So there's our fix for the eye. Now the same tool, the adjustment brush, is going to help us get out of this problem where we've got some very, very distinct blue fringing. So let's see how we're going to work at that. To fix this fringing, I'm going to select the adjustment brush and this time I'm going to select auto mask because that's going to be critical for selecting these hairs without having to do any of the work myself. I'm going to create a large brush and I want it to have a very small feather and I want it to be 100% flow. In other words, once I select something, I want it all selected. So I'm going to click here in this dark blue area to pin this down. I'm also going to turn on the mask overlay so we can see what's happening when we select this. And I'm going to make sure that I click just over the dark blue areas that little X mark in the middle of my brush has to be on a dark blue area because that's what's making my selection for me. Now if I go too far and click in a wrong area like that, I'm just going to press Control or Command Z to undo it. And I need to be really, really careful to make sure that I do undo it because otherwise if I select too much and just select a big blob of sky, then the fix is not going to be applied where we want it and it's actually going to be applied to the sky and we're going to see it and it's going to be everything that we don't want. So I'm going to work around here just grabbing hold of these really blue areas, making sure that I undo it if I go too far and get something that I didn't mean to get. Now down here you'll see that around the edges of the giraffe's head are some very blue areas as well, but provided I just click on those blue areas, Lightroom's going to make that selection for me. Now you may choose to do this in a few steps. You could do a little bit and then come back and do a little bit more. It's really your choice as to how you approach this task. I'm just going to do a fair wad of this so that you can see it and so that you can see the process that you would use to affect this change. Now once I've made my selection, I'm going to zoom back out again because I want to see this in place as I work. So I'm going to press the letter Z to zoom back out and I'm going to hide my mask overlay. We know that we've got the mask in place, but we don't want to see it because we want to be able to see the result of the fix, not the mask itself. Now the fix is going to be a little bit different. You could use the defringe option. So you could try and defringe this if you wanted to, but we're still getting a fair bit of blue in that. So I'm not actually going to use defringe. What I'm going to use is my knowledge of color. And the opposite of blue is yellow. So in this space that we're using, if we go to this area of the image that we have selected and if we fill it, with yellow, a really dark yellow, we're going to compensate for the blue and the net result is going to be a more neutral color. So I'm going to select a really, really deep yellow. In fact, I could probably even go slightly into the oranges on this because this is a very, very badly fringed area. This yellow is going to neutralize it. So if I click done, let's go and see what happened. This is the original unfixed area and this is the fix. You can see that it's really, really a good fix. We haven't 
affected the sky we've only affected the blue areas and the fact that there are still some little wispy blue areas are not going to be as bad as it was here this is bad this is acceptable so in this fix I would work into the other areas of the image that are showing the same sort of fringing again into this area with the adjustment brush making sure that we have auto mask on pin our brush down and then just clicking with this little X mark over the blue areas just making sure that we're only picking up the problem blues and not the sky and as soon as we get the sky we're just going to back off out of it now if you want to you could go even into four to one or eight to one if you find that that might give you a better ability to choose the areas that you want to fix now I don't think I'm going to get any of this wispy hair here so I'm just going to give up on that for right now I'm holding the space bar as I move down here to select these blue areas and you can see I've got a huge brush going on here but because I've got auto mask on this huge brush is only selecting the very blue areas so it's not actually making a lot of selection it's just making a very considered selection I'm not able to get those areas but let's go in here and aim for the blue here and perhaps some of this turn our mask overlay off zoom back out with the Z or Z key and then go and pick up our really really dark yellow color orange yellow color to apply to this area of the image click done let's go back and see this is going to go back two steps so this is the original blue through here blue through here and this is the fix much better color in these areas that were blue of course I'll finish off this image by sharpening it I'm going down to the detail panel I'm going to wind my sharpening up to a reasonably high value hold alt or option as I drag on the radius because I want to make sure where I'm getting my sharpening applied now this image was fairly sharp so I don't want a very large radius at all let's go into detail and just work out how much we want well I'm going to use a very very small detail value but with my masking I'm going to use quite a large value because I want to make sure that my sharpening is only applied to the areas of the image that I actually want to apply it to so thinking that's a pretty good sharpening mask for this image and then I'll just adjust the sharpening to get a realistic level for what it is that I want to do with the image will sharpen more of course for print than we would for online production so there's how I would approach the task of working with an image like this we want to bring out the detail in the image we want to lighten it a little bit better we want to make it a little more, more compelling to see this giraffe's eye and then we'll want to go and fix up these bluey areas there's really a hint of blue through here too so I might actually work on these areas to try and get rid of that blue tone and bring it back to a healthier sort of yellow brown I'm Helen Bradley thank you for joining me for this video tutorial look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop Lightroom Illustrator and a whole lot more